Cool. Now we're going to uh, uh, let the stage up to uh, Marta Wisniewska, who's a Google developer expert in Angular and web technology from Poland. She's passionate about sharing knowledge within the community and spreading her love for the tech. She's also an organizer in Women Tech Makers Warsaw and the Google Developer Group in Warsaw. So without further ado, here you go, Marta. Hello, everyone. My name is Marta Wisniewska. I'm from Poland. I live in Warsaw. And I'm super excited to be a part of this conference. I'm a Google developer expert in Angular and web technologies, and also a huge fan of progressive web apps. And today I will tell you how you can supercharge the speed of your apps with progressive web app secrets. And even if you're not familiar with PWA, but you want to get some knowledge about web performance, the presentation will be useful for you as well. Oh yeah, we need to talk. A few words why I selected the topic. Well, I follow different content about progressive web apps, blog posts, different talks, and so on. And still, I can see there's a lot of different approaches and opinions regarding this technology. I can hear a lot about benefits because of business side, because of user conversions, user experience. But I try to find something that will be interesting for you, for developers. And I found that the most useful, it will be speed. Because progressive web apps allows you to create fast apps. And today I want to tell you what exactly it means. Because it doesn't mean if you apply service worker, then you improve your, all your performance metrics. I will tell you what makes progressive web faster and also what are design patterns and caching strategies that allows you to improve web performance. So let's take a look at the agenda. I will start with caching strategies and design patterns to boost progressive web's performance. Then I will tell you about the combination of progressive web apps with WebAssembly. At the end, I will tell you about my performance experiments that I did on 15 progressive web apps that are already in production. I will tell you about the most common issues and also tips how you can avoid them. So let's get started. Let's start with caching strategies and design patterns to boost progressive web apps performance. Well, caching is the main source of making your app faster. And before we started talking about progressive web apps, we also had option to store data in browser cache. But what Service Worker offers is better control over how cached assets are managed. And Service Worker, this is the heart of progressive web apps. This is a proxy between client and server. It provides persistent medium that allows you to store your resources in controllable cache, network requests like other pages, scripts, images, assets, and so on. And from a practical perspective, this is a JavaScript file that is registered in your browser when you open it for the first time. Service Worker may make your app faster, but also may not. And even if your Service Worker is active, you have pre-cached all your old network requests, it doesn't guarantee faster page loading. It only means that all your data will be retrieved from cache, eliminating any potential time to first byte issues. And another really important aspect is that caching only matters on repeats visits. And you can achieve faster load time, but if you open at least once your app and you will repeat it. And after that, you can see this effect of faster loading. Because even sometimes you can see that the first loading is even slower than usually because Service Worker is also a JavaScript, additional JavaScript to handle by your browsers. So, so it means that it needs additional time to handle that. 
and at speed, this is more a factor of rendering time after all your responses are collected. And please remember about running all the steps before caching, because if your app is heavy, have a lot of JavaScript, big assets, and so on, then service worker won't help you. And you should remove unnecessary JavaScript, CSS, libraries, dependencies, and also optimize your assets and images. It will help you to get faster apps. Now I want to tell you a bit about caching strategies. And before I do that, I want to tell you about two factors. The first one, where does the data live in your app? Currently, you have two options to retrieve your data. You have option to retrieve it from cache and from the network. And based on those options, we have different caching strategies. The first one is that we only retrieve data from network. And it was used before we started talking and using progressive web apps. With service worker, we have option to only retrieve data from cache. But to be honest, it's not really popular because from practical perspective, we use mix, a combination of cache and network. And first case is that at the beginning, we try to retrieve data from cache. And if it's possible, we use it. But if we can't, then we try to retrieve it from network. And from the opposite side, and this case is great if your priority is to have fresh data. So at the beginning, you try to get data from network. So you send requests to the server and you wait for the response to get the data and to fill your app with this data. But if you're, it's not able, then you try to retrieve it from cache. So your app still working offline, but you at the beginning, of course, you try to get it from server. And the last option, so this is cache network race. It means that at the same time, you try to retrieve data from cache and network, and you use one that is delivered faster. And the second factor before you started designing progressive web apps, how do you render the app? Currently, you have two options. You can apply server-side rendering or clean or create client-side render app. And for server-side rendering, your server will generate the full HTML as a response to navigation. For client-side rendering, more actions are handled in the client rather on the server. So we have to handle data fetching, templating, routing on the client side. And based on those two kinds of apps, we have different caching. So for caching on server side render apps, we will cache the static part. So it means that gener full generated HTMLs. And it's quite simple to use. Um, but the main con is that you're not able to create effectively working offline apps because you can't handle more dynamic cases. For client side render and for caching on this site, we'll cache core code, um, images, assets, and so on. But we we'll also need um, some cases to handle more dynamic data. And in client side rendering, in caching, we use cache API and index database. And the main rule that is that um, the URL data go into cache API, but non-URL data go into database. And the question is, which architectural solution is the best for you, for your app? And it's good to divide your app into two parts and wonder what parts of your app are static what can you call them the app shell? So that are parts typically involved with navigation that then repeat on a few pages or on the most of your pages. And what are parts are a content are more dynamic that rather change more in your app. And apply for these different parts, we can apply different caching and different solution. 
And the best option is to use a combination of server-side rendering and client-side rendering. And in this option, we will cache the app shell and the content of the first page that we render to your users because we want to retrieve it as soon as possible. But we also want to apply caching on the client side for dynamic cases. So we will use it and retrieve from cache while your user will navigate in your app. The second option is a pure app shell model. In this case, we will use server-side rendering only for the app shell, for caching the app shell. But for dynamic data, we don't want to apply caching. We only use JavaScript and we only send requests to the server to retrieve fresh data. Because typically, in this case, there's no sense to apply caching because your content changes a lot. And the other option is to only use server-side rendering and cache everything that you can. So this is the app shell, but also the full content. And this solution is great for static pages because it allows you to create really fast apps. Um, but there can be a problem with fresh content. But if your app is still the same, it has the same content, it's a really good solution. And the last option, this is only client-side rendering and only caching on the client side. And in this case, it's quite simple to implement, easy to do. Um, but the main call is that it's quite slow, especially if you compare it to the server side rendering, because every caching on client side is just additional JavaScript to handle. And it won't be so fast like in server side rendering caching. Now let's talk about the second topic, about the combination of progressive web apps and WebAssembly. And I found this solution when I was considering two hottest trends if we're talking about the future of web performance. This is WebAssembly and progressive web apps. And maybe the idea is a bit abstract for you at the beginning and re your reaction is like that, but keep calm, I will explain you very soon. Well, progressive web assembly apps are a combination of progressive web apps and web assembly. And I tell you a bit why we want to use progressive web apps because of web performance, but what why we want to add web assembly? Well, currently JavaScript is the only one option to write front end apps. It's really useful, universal, and super powerful. But we also know that there is some cons, like for example, JavaScript is really slow. And we want, we know cases where we'll never select a solution. Like for example, for heavy computations. Because sometimes we just need more than JavaScript offers. And WebAssembly is a good alternative. It really often outperforms JavaScript while it's able to do the same tasks. So how does WebAssembly work and how you can integrate it with progressive web apps? Well, let's say that you have some app, some parts of your app that you want to implement in another programming language because it will be just more effective for you. You can write it in Rust, C, or C++. And this part of your app, you need to compile into WASM WOS module. And on the front end side, we'll have web app or progressive web app with, for example, service worker and web manifest and so on, and typical features for progressive web apps. And also you have different JavaScript libraries. So you need to add this generated WAS module into your app. And then the last step, we need to send it and execute in a browser. So your browser will execute WAS binaries into a virtual machine. So this is the general scheme, how it works, but there's a more practical solution. This is project called WAS, is generator for progressive apps and for Rust. It allows you to write the entire app in Rust, but also apply typical features for progressive web apps, like um, web manifest, like service worker, like home screen icons, and so on. And here you can see the official link to this project and also link to GitHub. 
I highly recommend you to try this code and try this project. Let's switch to the last topic, the most common issues based on my performance experiment. What I did, I tested 15 progressive web apps that are in production and I used measure tool from web.dev platform. And here you can see um, the overview of my results. Well, that are issues I found with counters how many times the issue appeared. And today I will tell you about the top five uh, that are the most common, but also I think I've, that are the most easiest to improve in your web apps. And a few words about the tool that I used. So this is Mero from web.dev. It's built on Lighthouse. It allows you to do um, audit tests, performance tests, and get the overview of your metrics in your web app. It's possible to use for any app that is in production, that is served on remote server. And it's great because it allows you to get um, the all advices that are that will be great for your exactly page, not general, but for your specific pages or there are some issues. And the most common issue, this is avoid chaining critical requests. Critical request chains are series of dependent network requests that are necessary for loading your page. And the longer chains and the bigger download sizes, then the impact on the load speed is more significant. And there are some best practices for us to achieve better loading time that we should minimize the number of critical resources. You can eliminate them, mark them as async or definitely downloads. We should also optimize the number of critical bytes to reduce the download time, to reduce the round trips. And also you have option to manage the order in which the remaining critical resources are loaded. So at the beginning, we should download all critical assets just to create, just to shorten the chain's length path. Tip number two, keep request count slow and transfer sizes small. And the best option to do that is just analyze requests and resources in your app. You can use the tool that I presented to you before. And another tip is that you can add budget JSON file to your project and set budget limits for specific metrics. For example, you're able to set limit for first meaningful pane, for the overall size of your page, for the total number of requests, and then you're easier to control these metrics in your app. This tip is involved with the main browser's renderer process that typically handle your code and transform it into something that user can interact with. And by default, the main thread of render browsers process handle all of your code that is typically involved with um, parsing HTML and building the DOM, parsing CSS and applying proper styles for your apps, and also parsing, evaluating, and executing JavaScript. And here you can see the impact of different processes for um, rendering your app for the time of loading. And as you can see, the most meaningful is script evaluation. And we should focus on delivering smaller JavaScript payloads. And there are some tips how you can achieve that. For example, we're able to implement code splitting. This is great technique to improve web performance. So we will we don't want to send the full code to your users. We only will only send the code that your users need at specific time when they use your app. The other technique, this is PRPL pattern. And in this pattern, we will push all the critical resources at the beginning. Then we will render the initial route as soon as possible. Then we will pre-cache all remaining assets and at the end, we will lay load remaining routes 
and non-critical assets. And last tips, we should also minify and compress your code and remove unused code. And maybe it sounds a bit obvious, but this is more practical tip. So if you open Chrome Developer Tools and you add coverage tab, then you're able to track unused bytes in your app. So you will see resources of your app and you can exactly check which parts of your code are not unused. So it's really useful for you to find unused parts of your app. Super important, apply lazy loading off screens for images and for iframes. And now you have option to apply native lazy loading, like at this example, but you can also implement it on your own with intersection observer API and with trigger image loads with JavaScript events. And regarding native lazy loading, let's take a look at the browser support. Well, in general, it works in web Chromium powered browsers. And so it will work with Chrome, Opera, Edge. Now it's possible also to use it in Firefox for the newest versions. But please keep in mind that it won't work in Safari and Extended Explorer. And there is for mobile browsers. So it's the same situation. It will work for Chromium powered browsers, especially for Android. So this Android browser, Chrome for Android, Samsung Internet and Firefox for Android. But remember that for other, um, let's say less popular browsers, it won't work. So you have to implement it on your own if you support other browsers. I'm telling you about images because here you can see estimated savings for one of tested progressive web apps that I was able to achieve only manipulating images. So with applying lazy loading, I was able to get 18 seconds to save 18 seconds on load for this page. And with properly sized images, I could save 17 seconds. And for applying native generation formats, I could get 14 seconds. So I talked about lazy loading, but other important aspects, if you're talking about optimizing and improving web performance with images, this is image size and also image format. And for image sizes, we should never serve images that are larger from the version that will be rendered on user screens. And it's a good technique to add different formats for different devices, like for mobile and desktop. And if we switch to the formats, so apply SVG and also replace complex icons with SVG. And remember about next generation formats like WebP, because this next generation formats has much better quality characteristic and compression if you compare it to, for example, PNG or JPG. And there are great tools that allows you to automate the process of converting multiple images into multiple formats. These tools are Gulp Responsive or Responsive Images Generator. And you can easily find them on GitHub and install with NPM. And these tools allows you to automate the process of converting and um, run it just from console. So it's really useful for you for developer. So let's sum up. Today I told you about the ways how to improve web performance for progressive web apps. I told you that caching is the main source of making your app faster, but it should be reasonable. Please remember about running audit tests before caching. And another tip, consider applying WebAssembly for some cases where JavaScript is not enough good. And the most important, the same performance techniques common for web apps are great for progressive web apps. Because fast web app means fast progressive web app. And that's all from my side. Thanks for having me, for your attention. If you want to get on the full slides, there is a link. You can read it after the presentation. And if you have any questions, I am free to answer. Thanks a lot.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Marta. Hope you're doing okay. You. Can you? I thank can you, you so much. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, we had a, a few questions in the in the Slack channel uh, that we'd like to to ask you. I'll go with the first one, and I'm completely biased because it's it's mine. <laughs> so the question is, do you have examples of websites using WebAssembly uh, or progressive web uh, WebAssembly app uh, for computationally intensive uh, features like you you mentioned in the talk? Yeah, so the examples it can be Figma on Squash, and also the project I presented to you before. Mm, during the presentation, so this was project. The the was one. Was yeah, I'll I'll have to look into that. It looks <laughs> looks really interesting, and I have to get to Rust as well someday. Uh, the next question uh, will be from uh, JP. We see very few developers taking advantage of offline support in PWAs. Do you think that's a use case? we should evangelize more. So, well, sometimes there's no sense to apply um, offline support for some apps because um, it really depends on the app, on the um, character of our data in our apps. And for example, for some cases, it's really useful, like for example, for static pages, um, for, for pages for, for example, conference sites, and when we have the static content that we don't change a lot, it will be really useful for our users. But um, sometimes if we implement bigger app, it's complex to implement and also to test. So um, these offline features are of course great, but not for every case. So it really depends on the app. And I don't want to force um, to everyone to implement the progressive web features, but just take a look if it makes sense for you, it will be improved for your users, for your speed, and so on. Thanks a lot. Uh, a third question coming from the from the Slack. Do you have an example of a before PWA slash after PWA uh, in a website in terms of performance gain? Mm -hmm. So this is for example, for example, Pinterest. I will send you the full link to the blog post that Edios Money published some time ago. Um, I can't remember more, but the Pinterest, I think it was the most popular that had a big, let's say, win with uh, applying progressive web features. Oh, thanks a lot. Do we have any other uh, questions in the Slack? Uh, for now, it's no, just okay. I don't think so. Feel free to, feel free to uh, ask yours uh, in there. We can wait for uh, for a few moments to make sure that we we don't miss any uh, interesting questions there. I see several people uh, typing, so maybe oh no, it was thanks. <laughs> Cool. So we shared Emily shared the the link to your uh, slides, Marta, on the on the Slack. And uh, will you be available uh, for a few moments afterwards to answer questions on the on the Slack if uh, somebody has any? Yes, I am free to answer, and I will respond to this answer on the Slack channel. Cool. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. A new one? I think we have a new one. Yeah. Wait a sec. It's coming on the screen. Yeah. Do you think it would make sense to cache some three D models for a web AR app? Oh, that's a that's a tough one. I guess. I'm not familiar with this technology, web AR, so I'm not sure what to answer would be proper. But I can check it with my friends who are really passionate about web AR. And then I will ask you on the Slack channel. Cool. Thanks a lot. Uh, well, I guess we can uh, say a big thank you, uh, Marta, uh, for your talk and for being available to the Q&A. 
you're uh, around on the Slack if uh, there are any more questions uh, about PWA, PWAAs, uh, or your uh, your talk in general. And uh, thanks a lot. Thanks.